Happy Easter. Welcome to Westgate Church Online. I'm Dana Clifford. And I'm David Kim. And it's an honor for us to join you in this unique, special Easter service. For the next hour, we're going to worship, pray. There's a cool story for the kids, and Steve's going to teach from the Bible. As we begin this worship service, we just invite you to not just watch the service, but participate in every way. Uh, as we sing, please sing along for the uh, kids' story. Children, just come up to the screen, and, and as Steve teaches from the Bible, open your Bibles and read along, and this will just make your experience a lot richer in every way. And don't forget, we have pastors for you on our online chat feature. We'd love to pray with you or any questions that you have. And if you're new, we'd love to know that you were with us. Just click that I'm new button and give us a little information about yourselves. So now we want to invite you. Let's worship Jesus Christ. The risen one. He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy. Echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant uncertainty. Countless voices screaming that death will have its way, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for normalcy and desperate pleas for safety and hope, three words calm our anxiety. In a universe that spun at breakneck speed, now isolated by orders to shelter in place, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our King, our Healer, our Defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if he is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only his word, his mission, and his infinite unconditional love for you. Because he is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow hope will not be disappointed. Faith will rise like never before. Tomorrow we will gather and build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming Savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because He lives. We know this because He is risen. Happy Easter. I want to encourage you all to sing along with us as we worship and celebrate the risen King.
strides to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own Brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken His love is what held Jesus to the cross. His love is what brought Jesus back up from the dead, filled his lungs with life. That love is available right here, right now. If you know him, be encouraged. And if you haven't yet trusted Jesus, make today the day that you open your heart to him and allow his love to come flooding in. Make him Lord of your life today. He can make a way in your life where there is no way. We're gonna sing about that right now. Let's, let's sing to our God who makes a way. Dark. 
God, you, you split seas open. God, you calm wind and waves. Lord, thank you that you could bring us hope and peace right here in this moment. And God, we ask you would bring an end to this pandemic. Lord, that you would heal our land and that you would bring us back together and that many people would come to know you and cry out for you. God, thank you that we can have this hope and it's secure because of the resurrection. Thank you for this hope we have. We celebrate you, Jesus. 
and we praise you and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. As part of the worship, we want to give you the opportunity to give. And thanks so much for so many of you that have already given. And kids, wow, way to go. We're so thankful for how you gave by doing the art pieces behind us. Because of your generosity, we've been able to serve our community in super cool ways. Number one, uh, we've been able to provide food for families in distress. And number two, we've been able to buy breakfast and coffee for our frontline medical workers. So if you're prepared to give, we've made it super easy. You can use the app or you can text to WG Saratoga or WG South Hills 77977. And now, kids, it's time for you. It's story time with Dave. And now it's time for story time with Dave. Woohoo! Hey, everybody. It's time for story time with Dave. And it's me, Dave. Listen, this is the time of the service where we are going to be reading an awesome story for you kids. So if there are kids in the room, if there's any kids, I would love for you to come a little closer and get down real close to the TV. Not too close, though. Don't want to make your eyes go crazy. And well, I'm going to read you a story, and I think it would be awesome if you just came forward. So now, before we get into the story, I got to ask you a question. How many of you are ever scared of anything? Anybody here ever scared of something? Like when you're going for a walk and there's like a big dog and it kind of jumps because it's excited and you're, ah, you're afraid it might scratch you? Or like at night, anybody here ever a little afraid of the dark? I know I am. For the longest time, I thought that Darth Vader lived in my closet. <laughs> yeah, I know that's crazy. He just sublet it, really. It's more like a vacation closet for him. He would come and go, so he didn't live there. Anyway. I was a little scared of the dark. Or how about this? Here's something else that scares me. When you go into Costco and you don't have a list, but you know you're going to come out with $200 worth of stuff anyway, that's terrifying. Or, or how about this? The thing that scares me the most, people who like black jelly beans. Yeah, they're the real monsters. Anyway, that's not what this is about. I'm here to read you a story about what it means to be scared. And so I wanted to read you one of my favorite all-time stories about being scared. It's a lovely book called Can't You Sleep, Little Bear. And I guess for Easter it would be better if it were Can't You Sleep, Little Bunny. But um, bears and bunnies and beets and Battlestar Galactica are pretty much all the same thing. And so I thought we would just read this story because bears and bunnies are pretty much the same thing. They're both furry and fluffy and deadly. So, yeah. No, that's not true. All right. So this is by Martin Waddell and Barbara Firth, and it's called Can't You Sleep, Little Bear? And this is the abridged version. Okay. Once there were two bears, Big Bear and Little Bear. Big Bear put Little Bear down to go to bed in the dark part of the cave. Go to sleep, Little Bear. But Little Bear couldn't go to sleep. Hmm. Can't you sleep, Little Bear? Big Bear said. I'm scared, Little Bear said. Why are you scared? I don't like the dark. What dark? The dark all around us, said Little Bear. Big Bear looked and saw that the dark part of the cave was dark. So he went to the lantern cupboard, which he bought at Ikea, put together, assembled himself. And he got out the tiniest lantern that was there. Here's a tiny light to keep you from being scared. Now go to sleep, Little Bear. It's a pretty small little lantern, but it's like a nightlight. Little Bear tried to go to sleep, but he could not. Can't you sleep, Little Bear? I'm scared. Why are you scared, Little Bear? I don't like the dark. What dark? The dark all around us. But I brought you a lantern, said Big Bear, but it's only a teeny weeny one. So Big Bear looked and saw that Little Bear was quite right. So he went to the lantern cupboard and took out a bigger lantern, and he placed it beside the other one. Two lanterns, double the light. Now go to sleep, little bear. Oh, the little bear tried and tried, but he could not go to sleep. Can't you sleep, little bear? No, I'm scared. Scared of what? Why are you scared? I don't like the dark. What dark? The dark all around us. But I brought you two lanterns, a small one and a bigger one. Oh, but it's not that much bigger, little bear said. And there's still so much dark. 
So, Big Bear thought about it and went to the lantern cupboard and brought out the biggest lantern of them all. Here, that's to keep you from being scared. Thank you, Big Bear, said Little Bear. Now go to sleep, Little Bear. What do you think's gonna happen? Little Bear tried to go to sleep. Oh, he tried and he tried and he tried, but he couldn't. Can't you sleep, Little Bear? No, Little Bear said. I'm scared. Why are you scared, Little Bear? I don't like the dark. What dark? The dark all around us. But I brought you the biggest lantern of them all. There isn't any dark left. There's like a thousand lumens of illumination and light in this room. It's literally driven away all the darkness, said Big Bear. Oh, there is dark, Little Bear said. And he pointed outside the bear cave to the night. There's dark out there. Look at his face, he's so scared. <laughs> Big Bear saw that Little Bear was right. Come on. Where are we going? Said Little Bear. We're going out. Out into the darkness? Little Bear said. Yes, said Big Bear. But I'm scared of the dark. But there's no need to be. Little Bear took Big Bear by the paw. And Big Bear led him out of the cave into the night. Out into the dark. Oh, it was so dark. I'm scared, Little Bear said, cuddling up to Big Bear. But Big Bear lifted up Little Bear, and he cuddled him, and he said, Look at the dark, Little Bear. And Little Bear looked. I have brought you the moon. The big, bright, yellow moon. And all the twinkly stars to drive away the dark. But Little Bear did not hear anything that Big Bear said because he had died of fright. No, I'm kidding. Because he had fallen asleep safe and warm in Big Bear's arms. And with that, Big Bear took Little Bear down into the cave to put him back to bed. And Big Bear read his Big Bear book by the Big Bear fire. And he read that book until... The end. Oh, that's a fun story. Now, what in the world does this story have to do with Easter? Well, I don't know if you know this, but on that first Easter, the disciples and the people who were with Jesus, his friends, they were really quite scared. But as the story that we just read shows us, if there's somebody very big and strong who loves you very much, who's with you, it can help fear fly away, just like the shadows fly away when we flick on the light switch. Now, my friend Steve is going to talk about the story of Easter and how Jesus really is like that big, strong person who's with us, who loves us very much. And so, because he's so big and strong and powerful and because he loves us so much, we actually don't need to be afraid. We can actually have peace. So, my friend Steve is going to talk about that now. And it has been so great being with you. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for letting me read this awesome book with you. And have a happy Easter. We'll see you later, kids. This has been Storytime with Dave. Thanks for stopping by. Well, hello and happy Easter to you. I know if your house is like ours, you're probably trying to settle down all that jumping and getting things settled down there. And it may take you a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and jump right in here and get started. You know, there are some events that come into our lives that come with such force and importance that they become what I call a, a chronological marker. It's, it's a life event that we begin to remember, we'll place on our calendars, and we'll either we'll celebrate it or, or have it as a day of honor. We decorate our homes and our desktops with memorials that we call pictures, and they kind of highlight for us in our, each of our homes uh, the kinds of things that are important to us. If, if you were to just, like as I did this past week, I just walked through my house and you would see pictures of me going off to college for the first time or the, the wedding to Dana, the, certainly was the woman that I wanted and now 40, almost 40 years later, it's the woman I needed. Um, the birth of children are celebrated and remembered and are certainly chronological markers. And, and then your children grow up and, and they have weddings of their own and you celebrate and enjoy those. 
And then if you're as old as I am, then your children begin to have children and you celebrate the birth of grandchildren. And you realize, man, the grandkids are even better than kids in some ways. And then if you live um, as long as I have, you'll also have the death of a loved one, uh, someone that was important to you, my mom or our son Clay. And this time of year reminds us of that. Routines get interrupted. Priorities get adjusted. Beliefs get challenged whenever these chronological events come. And, and the uncertainty can create anxiety and a lack of peace in our lives. COVID-19 has certainly done that to us. Um, this is unlike anything that any of us have ever experienced. And this is an Easter I know I will never forget. I will refer to this my whole rest of my life as the COVID-19 Easter, the time where we gathered together, kinda. You know, we, to honor the restrictions, we gather together. And that's happening all over the world, all over the world right now. Two billion plus people are gathering um, to celebrate this Easter in ways that we never have before. If Jesus were to walk into our homes and he had the opportunity to speak to us, what would he say at a time like this? What would the red letters be that he would speak into our lives? I actually have a, a place in the scriptures where the disciples were practicing shelter in place. They had um, withdrawn from community and sheltered themselves behind locked doors. And Jesus shows up and violates, <laughs> violates all their social distancing and has some things to say that I think we can learn from and can be a great encouragement for us on this Easter. It's in John uh, chapter 20. It says in verse 19, On the evening of that first day of the week, which would have been a Sunday, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. They are practicing SIP. And Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands in his side. If you can just imagine the drama of them seeing him here. And he, he actually shows them the wounds and they, they become overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And he says again, Peace be be with you. And then skipping to verse 24, it says, Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And so the other disciples said him, told him, We have seen the Lord. And actually the, the tense there is, they, keep, they tell him and they keep telling him over and over again. We've seen him, we've seen him, we've seen him. But he says over and over again, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe it. I mean, he is the original, ultimate skeptic. I just have seen Christ hanging on the cross. I will not believe it unless I see his wounds. Verse 26. A week later, and this would have been Sunday evening, his disciples were in the house again. And uh, it, I just read that phrase. Can I just take a pause there? When they were in the house again, I... I, had, I just read that phrase and thought about, there's going to be a day when we get to gather again. I miss you. I miss seeing you. I miss seeing your kids all dressed up for Easter today. I miss the celebration that we get to do together. When, there will come a day when, as the disciples did, they, be, they got back in the house again. And Thomas this time is with them. And though the doors were locked, the, lock, the, the disciples are still practicing shelter in place. They're still hiding. Jesus came and stood among them and he says for a third time, peace be with you. Now this is incredibly interesting, especially when you understand how selective John is in the writing of his gospel. He is very selective in what he puts in the gospel and what he leaves out. Commentators will tell you that John only has 21 days of Jesus' life recorded. He very selectively picked this day and this day and this day. But in this particular story, three times he records, peace be with you. It would have been the kind of peace, the greeting in Hebrew, shalom aleichem. In Greek, 
Irene uh, in Latin, Pax Tibi, but here, Shalom Aleichem. And Shalom is so much more than just a lack of conflict. It's the setting of all things right. It's the culmination of all of God's promises. It's the promise that one day God, who is on the throne, will make all things right. And when we experience that, it will be shalom. Shalom. Then Christ said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas gets a pretty bad rap, I think a little bit too harsh actually for doubting. All the rest of the guys were behind locked doors too a week earlier. But Jesus doesn't rebuke him. He's not harsh with Thomas. He just simply says, here, you, you, I'll, I'll give you what you ask for. See my wounds. Stop doubting and believe. And he also, it's, it's it, some... Jesus is in a state that he can touch. He's not a ghost. He's resurrected in a bodily form. And Thomas declares, my Lord and my God. The great climax, many people think of the, not only the Gospel of John, but the climax of all of the Gospels that were written. These, this great profession of Thomas, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John goes on to say, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples. We know that for now a couple of weeks after this, that Jesus stayed with them and showed them things and taught them things which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, this story and the other things in John's gospel, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. John challenges us. Believe. Believe. So if we're going to move towards this kind of belief in a, in a resurrected Christ, what do we know for sure? Well, we, there are several things that we know for sure. Historians agree, almost all historians agree, that Jesus was a first century Palestinian Jew that was born and lived under the rule of Roman law and power. And that at the end of his life, he was crucified and killed by the Romans in Jerusalem. And that the tomb was found empty several days later. And that the followers of Christ, his closest followers, believed the tomb to be empty. We know these things. It's, it's, it's verified in not only the scriptures, but also in non-biblical accounts. And one thing we know today as we gather that across the, the world, Christianity is the largest religion in the world. 2,000 years later, after this claim of the risen Christ, over 2 billion people, over 2.3 billion people, in fact, are gathering and celebrating Easter. So what's the most reasonable explanation? The only conflict here is why is the tomb empty? That's the, that's the, the arguing point. That's the stickler for us. Well, we have some options. Maybe Jesus didn't really die. Um, it's called the swoon theory. Maybe he didn't really die. He just, he just, you know, somehow in the tomb he revived and was fine. Or maybe it, it, there was a conspiracy theory. The, the disciples decided to sneak in and steal the body and then um, hide it somewhere and then risk their lives to the, to the point of suffering the same kind of death, the horrible death of crucifixion. Maybe, that, maybe that's what happened. Or maybe you believe in a later um, uh, conspiracy theory that maybe a thousand years later or so, some people, I don't know, with robes and you know, hoods on, made this story up and kind of inserted it into the history that we now have. Or maybe you believe that somehow these guys were just deceived. They had maybe a, a, a large group hallucination that lasted several weeks and over a hundred people who saw it. And, and it was just, I don't know, that, that they were hallucinating. I can remember still the first time that the resurrection story was explained to me and I realized the most reasonable explanation for the facts that we have is that Christ in fact rose. And because he rose from the dead, he is who he said he is. 
and he is the person who can offer us peace. But you, here, with us now, how do you find peace? What are the options available to you this Easter? Well, you can, I guess, embrace a, what I'll call a karmic religion. It's a religion that believes we're on a, a system of cycles and that our existence now is just a cycle, a refreshed cycle of a life that we had earlier and now we're cycling again. And then all of the things that happen to us, whether we're sick or not, whether we are, we've lost our job or not in this coronavirus, um, all of those kinds of things are just things that happen to you because of karma. They are, they are just, you're getting what you deserve from a, an earlier life. You have embraced a lifestyle and a, and a worldview of cycles. Not much peace there. Or you could embrace um, a lifestyle and a, and a worldview that um, basically says life is an illusion. Um, you can rid yourself of desires, and if you can just get rid of those kind of desires then, and embrace the fact that we're not really here, this doesn't really matter, we're, we're not, it's all you know, just an illusion that we're facing here. If you can detach from the reality of what you're experiencing, then maybe you can find peace there, but it doesn't sound like it's very peaceful. Or maybe you can just try harder, just get tough, just buck up, or as they say in Texas, cowboy up. I mean, just get tough and get on it and realize that you can somehow get through there. Be strong. But I've never been that strong. Or finally, you can just resign yourself to the fact that there is no God, that we are just a product of time and space and chance. And the things that you're experiencing is just because if it's bad, it's, you're just unlucky. There is no God. There is nothing after this life. There is no hope of something better. There is no meaning. Whether it's cycles or a detachment, I'm trying to be strong or resigning. All of these are, we, these worldviews are like straining to reach up, to somehow reach up and, and touch God. That we can somehow reach to Him if we just try hard enough, if we're just good enough, if we can, if we can just do the right things and say the right words that we can somehow find peace. We can reach this God who is so hard to find. But the picture of Christianity is quite different. It's not a picture of us reaching up to God. It's a picture of God reaching down to us, stooping down and becoming man, taking on flesh and blood, experiencing life and then dying for us, expressing the full extent of, our lo of His love for us, and that while we were His enemies, He dies for us. Not just in theory, but in reality. And He demonstrates that historical reality of His resurrection by offering us peace now. This is what we call the Gospel. It's the hope of Easter. It's why today is our Super Bowl those of us who claim Christ. We, we see the gospel really all over uh, the writings of the Bible and in the New Testament particularly, but one of the places where it's actually very concise is in John 1.12. It says there in John 1.12, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, just emphasizing three particular words, to receive, believe, and become. What does it mean to receive? It actually means, and to recognize, that the, the gift of peace, the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, is that it is a gift. It is not anything you earn. It is something that is given to you, held out to you, for you to embrace and receive. God comes into the world and bears our penalty, pays our debt that we might have a relationship with God. And He suffers on our behalf. And we need only receive that. Receive that. And then believe. What must we believe? It says here that we must believe in His name. Well, His name is Jesus Christ. What does His name reveal about who He is? First, Jesus means the Lord saves or Savior. 
We recognize that Jesus alone pays this debt. He is the one who can, can satisfy God's um, desires and designs for the distance between us and a holy God. He is, in fact, the Savior of the world. And we believe and embrace that. But not only that, He is also the Christ. He is the culmination of all that God has promised to us. He is, he is the anointed one, the Messiah, the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament law. You don't have to know anything about that. But all you've got to know is Jesus is the one who paid the debt and He is the one who now sits at God's right hand and promises eternal life to all who will receive and believe and then become. He gave the, if we do this, it gives us the right to become children of God, adopted into God's family, embraced as His very own. The invitation is that we are secure because of the work of Christ, and now we are ushered in into this relationship with God. The journey begins now. We, peace is offered now, not for some cosmic re reality of ghosts and spirits, but of real life, real resurrection, of a, of, of a victory over death, of a restoration of life as it was intended to be. Receive, believe, become and have peace. Perhaps as I, as I wrap this, this up, you're there and you're saying, I want to. I want to receive this gift. I want to believe in His name and become a child. We would love to help you on that process. You can just go to the chat room and there's, there's pastors there that would love to visit with you and talk with you, share their story about how they came to receive and believe and become, and then help you with the process, pray with you, begin the journey. We'd like to get you some resources too to help with that along the way. And if you'll just go to the chat room, we'll be able to do that for you. And then I would also say, I think that there are some of you, there's a chance where you're saying, you know, Steve, I'm interested. I'm interested. And uh, maybe you've, maybe some of the worldviews that I've embraced are, are not as solid as I thought. Uh, I'd like some more information. We'd love to be able to get you some information. We'd love to be able to get to you a resource, a free PDF of a book called Why Jesus. And in this book, it'll give you some more information about who Christ was and and what it means to believe in Him and why it's a reasonable response of faith. We'd love to be able to get that to you, but you've got to help us a little bit. We need you to send an email to easterbooks at westgatechurch.org, easterbooks at westgatechurch.org. And if you'll just send an email, we'll send you that PDF. But we'd really like to do a little more for you. We'd like to also give you a New Testament where you can begin to read the words of Christ for yourself. We'd like to give you another resource, a book that you can read called The Case for Easter, where it just kind of looks at some of the arguments about why we believe the resurrection is real and it happened historically. And if you'll just in that, if you'll in the email that you send, if you'll go ahead and include a mailing address, then we will send to you um, these resources so that they can be there for you. And then there's all kinds of opportunities for you to be able to get back to us with your questions and the things that are going on. And then I would say to you, those of us that are living this coronavirus in this strange time, and we have received, we have believed, we are becoming like Christ and we are His children. I would say that this is a time to also embrace the promise of peace that He would say to you as well. Certainly He would say to the skeptic, peace, but He would say to His children, peace, peace, shalom aleichem, peace unto you. Be of courage, be not afraid. A.W. Tozer said that a scared world needs a fearless church. Be strong and courageous in Him. Know that He would say to you, even now, peace be with you.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ and the amazing sacrifice on our behalf, this horrible death of crucifixion. But we celebrate now the reality of his defeat of death and his resurrection from the dead. May that reality become more real in us. And may we be people of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's celebrate the peace that we have in Jesus today. You've got permission to dance if you want. Get up, clap, sing along with us. Let's worship the risen Christ.
What a powerful opportunity for us to proclaim together as a community, He lives. If you're ready to move forward with your next step of faith, to do as Steve said, to receive, to believe, and to become, would you go ahead and click respond? We wanna walk with you in your next steps. But maybe you're not ready yet to take that step of faith. You might have some additional questions that need to be answered, totally legitimate. Starting this Tuesday, April 14th, uh, via Zoom from 6 to 8 p.m., we're gonna be offering an online course called Alpha. Alpha is a safe place for you to voice your objections and to ask legitimate questions about faith. I hope that you'll consider joining me. You can find out more information at westgatechurch.org slash alpha. We wanna close our time together on this Easter in a little bit of a different way. Um, I've sent you out with this blessing before, but we're gonna try something singing together the blessing of Aaron. And this was a blessing that was given that God came to Moses and said, when you send the people out, tell Aaron to say these things. And so as we do this, this is the instruction of God that this would be a way that we would, we would uh, end our time. But also there's a word amen, and we use the word amen all the time. And it actually means, may it be so, or I agree, or that's just the way I want it. So as you sing amen, you're actually agreeing with the words that have been said and, and projecting that blessing. Lord bless you and keep you Make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, now I'd like to invite you to sing with me. If you're uncomfortable singing, you can just speak it over the people that are dear to you, maybe the people that you're watching with, and speak this blessing, sing this blessing over them. Let's sing it together. Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen, 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 amen. Peace unto you. He is risen. He's risen indeed.